functions and relations. So let's just jump right into the definition. A function is a correspondence or a relationship is sometimes how it's defined. A relationship between two sets such that each member of the first set corresponds to exactly one member of the second set. So each unit in the first set can only correspond or only relate to exactly one member of the second set. And to help this make a little bit more clear, they've defined the first set to be the domain and the second set to be a range. So it's still pretty ambiguous at this point, so let's actually see some examples to help clarify what defines a function or not. So I have the definition listed up here to help recall what the definition was. Again, it's relationship such that each member of the domain or the first set corresponds to exactly one member of the range or the second set. I have three examples here, and we're trying to figure out whether they are a function or not. And if not, we want to clarify why it is not a function. I suggest that you pause the video and take a guess at these three examples to see whether you believe they are a function or not, going off of the definition as I have defined it for you there. Okay, the key to this is each member of the domain corresponds to exactly one member of the range. So if we start with example one, I take each member of my domain and I see how many times it corresponds to the range. So in this one, it corresponds once because it has one arrow. This one corresponds once. This one corresponds once. And this one corresponds once. So each member of my domain only has one correspondence with each member of the range. So therefore, in example one, this is, yes, it is a function, because each of those, again, only has one correspondence. So in example two, um, at first glance, most students tell me that this is, no, not a function, because we see that in our range, we see that there is quite a few different relations going on there, or quite a few different correspondence. But remember, it is such that each member of the domain corresponds to exactly one member of the range. So that means the range can actually have more than one correspondence. So if I look back at this more closely, my first member has one correspondence, second, one correspondence, and you see that each of these here has one and only one correspondence to the range. So the range can repeat, but the domain cannot. So in this one, this is, yes, a function, because the domain does not have any repeated value. That should give you a insight to example three. Um, if we look at the first member of our domain, we see that it has two correspondence. Six corresponds to 18 and negative six corresponds to 36 at the same time. And that is the no-no. So basically you cannot have any repeated domain values. So in example three, this is not a function. And the reason is, is negative six in the domain has repeated values or has repeated correspondence, relations, or whatever vocabulary word you choose to use. So a quick recap is that domain values cannot be repeated, but range values can. So what we're going to do with this now is we're going to adapt this into some actual um, college algebra material. So we've been working on graphing things using x and y, so that's what we're going to do here. I have three more examples with ordered pairs, but just note that each x value corresponds to the domain value, and each y value corresponds to the range value. So I'd like you to pause the video again here in these three examples, and again, I want you to figure out whether it is a function or not. But before you actually do that, what you should do is we want to identify the domain and the range. 
you need to do that in specific notation. You need to do it in set notation, meaning your answer should be in braces. The numbers should be in numerical order, and they should be re out repeated values. So identify the domain and range, and then clarify whether this is a function or not. Okay, in example one, I've already said each of the x values is the domain. So my domain here is my x values in set notation, meaning the braces, that identifies a set, in numerical order. So my smallest x value is negative 2, my next smallest is 0, and then 4, and then 5. So I've identified all of my x values meaning I've identified all my domain values. Now I need to do my range. Same thing in set notation, meaning the braces, in numerical order. So my smallest one is negative 2, and then 1, 5, and 7. So again, range comes from the y value. And you should not have any repeated values if values do repeat. So I've identified my domain and my range. Now, if I wanted to define the relation, that would be the arrows going between these values here. So let me draw them in red. So my first, here's the relation, negative 2 goes to 5. Second, 5 goes to 7. Third, 0 goes to 1. And fourth, 4 goes to negative 2. So to identify whether this is a function or not, we want to see do any of our domains actually repeat. They do not here, so this is yes, it is a function because no repeated domain values. Okay, if you didn't pause the video previously like I suggested, I think here would be a perfect time to pause it now and do the same thing with example two and example three. Okay. So let's start with our domain. Again, all the x values in numerical order, 2 and 9, but no repeated values. So even though I have 9 listed twice up here, I'm only going to list it once down there. My range, set notation in numerical order, negative 5, 4, and 5. And if you need to, you can draw the relationship or the correspondence between these. So 9 goes to negative 5, 9 goes to positive 5, and 2 goes to 4. And if we want to identify whether this is a function or not, the answer in this one is no. This is not a function because the 9 value in the domain repeats. We cannot have repeated domain values. Example three, same thing, my domain or all my x values in numerical order, negative five, zero, six, in set notation with the braces, range. I see I actually have the same y value consistently all the way across. So in set notation, the only number that I put in my range is three. My relation is each one of these goes to three. And remember, you can have repeated range values, but not domain values. So I don't have any repeated domain values. So here, this is yes, this is a function. I think this is a great time to stop this video. And in the next video, we'll come back and figure out how to find whether something is a function, not by giving sets like we did in the last two examples, but by giving a graph instead.